This is my Bass Hunter two-man bass boat. I've done quite a few modifications to it, and I'd like to walk around and show you what I've done. Figure will start up front, and then we'll work our way toward the back. You'll see that the original seats that came on it were plastic ones. Just, uh, you know, kind of went up to the middle of your back. So I replaced those with some of these uh, more comfortable, you know, seats that were built for larger boats from Bass Pro Shops. It's on the same mounts that came with the boat. So I'll try to get in here. You can see these mounts on this Bass Hunter boat, they kind of just sit in these rails. And so it was handy to be able to reuse. Also, you know, sometimes you see the pedestal seats. Wow, well, that would have been nice. There's limited room, it's only a nine and a half foot boat. And so being able to still get a tackle box underneath the seat or you know, if there's an extra pole that you want to take or a net, you can have all the room from front to back, except for the box back there that I built for. We'll show you in a little bit. This boat comes with just open um, areas where you can put fishing poles and, uh, you know, some drink holders and whatnot. I'll show you that in a second here. Uh, but what I did is I I cut some pieces of wood, waterproofed them, and then wrapped them in carpet to add as these kind of rod lockers on both sides of the boat. So again, it's a nine and a half foot boat. You can easily fit, you know, seven, seven and a half foot rods in here all the way up to eight foot rods with no problem in a, in a little mini bass boat. It's been handy. You'll see each side has got three of these Stainless steel hinges, stainless steel hardware, kind of all throughout. And that's what, you flip it open, you'll see, here I'll get in here and lift it up. You'll see I have a couple rods in there. And it's made, you can see it's molded for, to fit rods normally. Uh, but having these the rod lockers on there that flip up, I'll show you a little bit later. There's a gas-filled shock uh, that, that holds it up while you're uh, you know out on the lake. You can you're not fighting with it. It's not folded all the way over, so there's no pressure on the hinges. You know, it's easy to open and close. Just shut it back down. You know, I'm only just using my thumb basically to open it up, and super easy to get into and out of. Same thing on the other side. Just have a bunch of odds and ends. Again, all the way at the back. I'll show you there when we get back there, but a gas shock that helps it open up. You can see the underside is all waterproofed with a white waterproofer. And then each side also has, you can see under there, three sets of LED lights that I've wired in. And again, we'll uh, show you how that works when I get to the back. Have the kids fishing poles in there too, so it's handy. Just uh, on the way to the lake, you have somewhere to store your tackle and your fishing rods. Good. And this is just, you know, one hand, a couple fingers, easy to close, super helpful. I'll put up some pictures of the kind of the construction process, but here's the, the box that I custom built to fit right in the middle of that. And you can see back there, I put a mount for the fish finder, all the wires, you know, go straight down inside into the inside of this box. Got two little storage compartments, or one big storage compartment, one little storage compartment. And while we're on the front of this, I'll show you. So I'll open up one of these. 
These compartments in the back, here's the one for the battery. And you'll see, so I also do a little bit, mess around with remote control cars and boats and that sort of thing. I've got these XT60 is what they're called, these uh, connectors that they usually, usually use them on remote control cars and uh, that sort of thing. But there's, I have three circuits in there right now two light circuits and then one for um, the fish finder and then the trolling motor is plugged directly into the battery. You'll see one of the light circuits, so hit that. One of the switches turns the lights on inside here, so there's LEDs up underneath the lip of this. And then same thing on the other side, there's LEDs underneath there and I just have some bug spray for stage kit and then the extra transducer cord that wasn't needed kind of hanging back there but plenty of room for some other stuff and turn that light off um, you see the back I kind of just wired in those toggle switches and got the fuses back there everything's on fuses except for the trolling motor Close that. I'll show you what I was talking about. So here's the gas shock that I was talking about. It's just mounted to the underside of that, of the rod locker, and then down inside the boat here. Again, those LEDs. If I put the other side up, I suppose I don't have to, but if I put the other side up, again, another gas shock that helps open it up, and I'll hit one of the other switches in here. So if you're out later, you can see all your rods, reels, get to what you're needing. There. Again, same thing on the other side. Been super helpful. So if I close those up, turn the light off. That's the other thing. The uh, I just have the fish finder in. Simulator mode, kind of the demo mode, but that's the fish finder. So usually when I'm usually when I'm boating along or trying to get to the next fishing spot, I'll be turned sideways, so my feet will be hanging over the chair. My feet will be hanging over the chair onto that rod locker over there. And I'll be using the trolling motor. The other thing with the rod lockers, they both have a, a latch on them, a little clasp here. So when you're done with it or you're trailering or on the truck, getting to your next spot, you can latch it up and it's not gonna fling open on the highway or going down the road. Both sides have one of those. Again, stainless steel, all the hardware stainless steel, so don't have to worry about rusting and the fish finder is on a switch as well, so instead of, you, know, you could power it off the, just with the button on the fish finder itself or just flip the switch and it's off. That's the other thing I didn't mention about having those connectors on there. It's super helpful for uh, being able to take the battery out and charge it so you don't have to you know, take the boat all the way to the charger. You can just leave the boat on the lake or, um, you know, leave the boat somewhere else and then unplug the circuits and take the battery out. It fits through there real nice. Um, take it out, go charge it, bring it back, put it back in. The whole thought behind the boat is just to, how do you make it easy, simple to use, saves a lot of space, you know, less than a 10 foot boat. So 
space is at a premium, how do you use the, how do you make the most of it? All right, so the anchor back here, it's the um, anchor winch. So you can see that here. You know, the anchor kind of rests up in this little holder back here. To put it down, you just twist the top of this. Anchor will fall down at the bottom. Kind of tightens itself there. And then when you're ready to go and move to the next spot, you just winch it on up. Back in its spot. Again, not taking room in the inside. Everything's all mounted to the box there. Fabricated a little roller, a nylon roller again, stainless steel hardware in the back here. So the rope doesn't get, doesn't drag on the box or get caught up. Just goes up, you see it, it winds. It winds onto the, uh, the winch more on the bottom, but that's okay, I've never, I think there's about 35 feet of line on there. And, uh, you know, I don't go into lakes any deeper than that. So I think about 20 feet is the most I've had it out and it was no problem. So this trolling motor, it's an older trolling motor. Um, you'll see one of the things I did with it, again, all in the name of saving some space. So it still rotates, you know, forward, backward. You can tilt it all the way backward and drop it down to get on the move. And then you can pull it up when you're on the trailer or on the, in the truck. It does fit between the bed rails of my 08 Silverado. It's just a you know, crew cab short box. so. Fits in there nicely, sticks out the back just a little bit and strap it down, good to go. Back the truck right down a, you know, a boat ramp and just push it out the back essentially. You see I've got the wires for the trolling motor and the transducer coming out the back here. So kind of waterproofed, some little patches there. You'll see I, I cut off the front part of the mount for the trolling motor and then mounted it, through bolted it, with two bolts from the backside and then two heavier duty stainless steel screws through the top. So, and then the, uh, the transducer for the fish finder mounted to the bottom of the trolling motor. Certainly no pro with the fish finder, there's probably a better way to do it, but I wanted to avoid putting holes in the boat below the surface of the water, so. That was more important to me than having a perfect working fish finder. I'm not sure if the motor and the frequency that the motor runs at messes with the transducer. And I imagine it could, but I'll leave that to you guys in the comments to tell me. Yeah, like I said, lots of space. You can turn around, put your legs forward to the side. You could put them backwards, I suppose, if you move the seat. So seats are all adjustable. They Put it, you can position them front back where we want. You could take the front one out and just go as a single person. Works really well. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video of the modifications I did to this little Bass Hunter boat. It was a f fun project. And I've had it out you know, about a dozen times or so. It's performed flawlessly. Appreciate it if you like, comment, let me know what you think.